Hello, we have with us Dr. Musharraf Hussain, who is the Chief Executive of the Academy Institute here in Nottingham. And he's going to talk to us about predestination. And this is the last of our videos in a series on the basic beliefs of Islam. So the first belief is belief in God, then belief in angels, belief in books, and belief in uh, prophets, messengers, and belief in the last day. And then the sixth one, belief in predestination. So Musharraf, help us understand why do Muslims believe in predestination? Is it in the Quran or the Hadith? Where does this come from? One of the important attributes of God is that he's alim, the all-knowing, the omniscient. There is nothing in the universe that he does not know of. And let me just give you an example how this would be. You know, um, let's take Rolls-Royce. Uh, Rolls-Royce down the road in Derby make uh, the best aeroplane engines. Uh, and uh, th they know every component, those 50,000 components in that engine, they know every one of them, how they are made, what they do, and not only that, they know their capability. They know how strong and big their engine is, what power it has, and therefore how many people it can carry, what speed it can go at. Well, God is obviously, you know, there's no comparison with God. And, and, and therefore, uh, you know, in, in, in God has this knowledge of his universe, intimate knowledge, precise knowledge, accurate knowledge. And in fact, the word taqdeer in Arabic, Qadr and Taqdeer actually is about precision and accurate uh, measurements really. God has Qaddara you Qaddiru Taqdeeran, you know, which God talks about in the Quran about how the sun and the moon, uh, you know, he designed them so accurately and precisely that they don't move a second over this millennium and thousands and thousands of years, for b billions of years they've been going and it is at the same time that they set and and, and rise. So, you know, God has a very precise, deep knowledge and of, of his universe and of his creation. Uh, so therefore, uh, knowing the capability of his creation is quite obvious, just like the, uh, the, the, the makers of Bentley know exactly how far their car can go in 10 seconds and how much acceleration it can have. God is far more knowledgeable and powerful in his knowledge. So he knows his creation, how it works. That is what the idea of taqdeer and predestination is. So you're using the word taqdeer or, uh, or qadr. This is the word we translate into English as predestination. Is that? Yes. And, uh, you know, s some of the, the, the Muslim scholars have said very simply, you know, it's God's pre-knowledge of my capabilities and what I will do. And, 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 and this does not deprive me of the freedom. I have a freedom. I have been given a freedom. In fact, God created me with that freedom to choose between right and wrong. You know, that is, m and, and that is what he's going to judge on. Otherwise, the whole concept of judgment, the whole idea of God being Hasib and Raqib and, and, and the uh, Munsif and the Adl, the j just judge, would be meaningless, really. So you have to have this notion of, uh, you know, man having the freedom of choice. So all these words meant justice that you... Yes, that's right. Sorry, those four words. Sorry, yes. Yeah. They all mean that, 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 yeah, so God being the judge, the just judge. Yes. Okay. Uh, nonetheless, if I understand, uh, God creates all of our deeds, does he not? In his, uh, his creative activity includes creating all of our deeds and how does that fit in then with our human free choice? Okay, well, you know, it's very much like um, the genes. Uh, we believe g God is the creator of those genes. The genes give us the capability of actually how powerful my muscles will be. That's what determines that. However, how I use my muscles is my choice. And God has given us that very special freedom, this freedom of choosing. Okay, and that comes through our intellect, and this is what makes human beings so special, you know. And that is what God is going to judge us on that I have told you to do this, and whether you accept that or not, and whether you choose to obey me or disobey me is your choice. We can do that, and that is what makes human beings so special, really. But God, yes, of course, he, you know, when we say that God is the creator of 
uh, man's actions. What we really mean is God is the creator of the capability with which we are executing those, but the choice is ours. Okay. Um, as I recall, it also says God has uh, predestined the, the sweet and the bitter and the good and the evil. Uh, in some creedal statements at least. How do we understand that? Yeah, I, I think, again, it very simply means uh, that the, whether it is good or bad, uh, is actually th the way uh, human beings actually um, uh, use it, misuse it, uh, or, um, you know, let, let's take uh, uh, the snake's poison, for example. Okay, the snake's poison is something that is very important for the snake. It's part of its, um, but if we stick our hands into the uh, snake's burrow, then it's our fault, you know, for being poisoned by that. So, so when we talk about, you know, the bad being created by God or the evil being created by God, it simply means, you know, yeah, God is the creator of the venom as well. But, uh, you know, whether we stick our hands I I I there is, is, is our choice, really. So, and, and same with good things. You know, when we are able to benefit uh, from uh, the, 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 the some of the plants that will heal us, again, that is God's creation. But we made the right choice by doing the investigation and seeing, well, this has got these good uh, qualities. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you, Moshara, for helping us understand predestination. And that concludes our series on the basic beliefs of Islam, which were God, angels, books, prophets, or messengers, the last day, and predestination. Thank you. <laughs>